Good evening, welcome to the Black Business Alliance. This is the show where we showcase our top black CEOs and our business owners. This is the show where we talk about progressing our community. And this is the show where we link our entrepreneurs, our community, and our, entre and our business owners together. I wanna welcome you all to the Black Business Alliance. This is your host, John Sanders. I'm actually here tonight with two very special guests, two of our top CEOs in the New York City area. And I'm actually very honored because there are so many people in our community that don't recognize the potential that we have. And the reason why I'm honored to showcase these two top CEOs is because these entrepreneurs have paved the way and they're showing us the strategies for success. Let's go ahead and welcome Jackie Dennis, and we're going to welcome Yvonne Murphy. Thank you for having us tonight. Thank, thank you, Thank you John. for being here tonight. Thank <laughs> you for being here. Yes, so we have Jackie Dennis. She is the president and the CEO of a company called JD Marketing. Yes. And we have y Yvonne Murphy. She's here in the New York area. She's the president and the CEO of two companies in the area here, and we'll certainly talk about that. So welcome to the Black Business Alliance. Well, thank you. I'm Pleasure glad to you be all here. Are here. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So we were in a car earlier, and we were talking about merging our economy with social issues. There's so many people in the community that achieve a certain level of success. They achieve a certain level of prosperity, and we forget about the social ills in the community. So let's talk about how you were able to achieve success, but you were able to maintain the connection to the community and deal with the social issues in the black community. Um, with my company, uh, JD Marketing, it's so important that we um, invite everyone. This is the opportunity, this is the time, based on the economy but where we are, for entrepreneurship to hit everybody mm -hmm. across the masses. Absolutely. Regardless of age, because um, being a high school teacher, I am teaching entrepreneurship in my classes. Mm -hmm. And I also what have... school? Hempstead High School. Okay, Hempstead High School. <laughs> 29 years. Mm -hmm. 29 mm -hmm. years. Uh, and I also have a Young Entrepreneurs Program through Cedarmore Corporation in Freeport. Oh, wow. And okay. we've been training those... Yeah, we've been training yeah. those kids for about 10, 15 years now. Mm -hmm. And if you look at and I always use this example in my, uh, with my high school students. Entrepreneurship has no age limit. Mm. You have a lot of young people who are becoming entrepreneurs. Very true. Successful Very true. entrepreneurs. Very true. So yeah. if this child can do it, so can you. So can you. So can you. And it's really good that you are focused on pouring into the next generation because oftentimes we forget about point into the next generation yes. because without the next generation there's nothing to pass right. exactly. and there's no foundation laid. So talk more about your company and what you do and I also want to transition to Yvonne mm -hmm. and we would like to learn more about the companies that you've launched. Okay, uh, I'm a network marketer with a company called Five Links. Uh, Five Links has been around for uh, 15, 16 years. Mm -hmm. uh, well established. They are mm -hmm. not uh, at, in a stage of where they have to prove anything. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. most businesses will fail within the first two, two years. That's what they say. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, within two years. Yes. I, thought, I actually thought it was five years, but now it's two years. It's, it's, it has really changed because so many people are beginning to hate the nine to five, mm -hmm. don't want to go that route anymore. 
So now more businesses are opening, but mm -hmm. you really have to be prepared. Wow. You really have to be. Absolutely. Mentally, financially, mm -hmm. the whole picture has prepared. to be in, in place. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about your company. And the reason why I brought you two here is because you two actually have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. And we're <laughs> going to talk later on this in the show how we can join forces and work synergistically with each other, merging companies. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about your company. So I own a licensed home care agency and I own a social work agency. The first company is Beacon Elder Care. It's mm -hmm. Elixir, so it's licensed by Department of Health. And the oh, wow. other agency is Beacon Geriatric Consulting Agency, and that's a social work geriatric case management. Really nice. And um, to go back to your initial question in terms of how do we reach a certain level in our business of success, mm -hmm. and then we get that information back to the mm -hmm. people behind and us so that mm -hmm. the community, so that either they can be successful or maybe they can utilize the information that we have to offer. Absolutely. And I tell people knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times in the community, if you don't have that role model that you see that has gotten up mm -hmm. and made things happen, then you don't have a marker to shoot for. Absolutely. And so we go out and we do a lot of seminars and uh, mm -hmm. speaking engagements and trainings, and I try to touch on every arena that we possibly can. Mm -hmm. I don't just stick to the healthcare. I'll go yeah. to the mm -hmm. accountant's conference or to an engineer's uh, seminar and we normally tell people how to access services. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the community and you have a certain amount of resources, the information is available to mm -hmm. you because you're savvy enough to go out there and get that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if you're mm -hmm. in the community and you don't have a certain amount of resources, it's much more difficult to get the yes. information you need mm -hmm. to get things done for what you want. So. You know, you made a very interesting point, and this really resonated with me, and you used the term markers. Like people in the community have to see markers. Like, like we mm -hmm. need to see images of success. Mm -hmm. And those images of success are imprinted into our subconscious mind. Right. And oftentimes we're critical about the community and critical about some of our social issues. But we don't oftentimes, we don't have the connection to the people that have resources. Or we, we're not connected to the people who have access to power people who are the, uh, the, the trailblazers, right. people that have paved the way. Mm -hmm. We don't have access to those people. But once we get direct access to people who have achieved a, a certain level of success, then we're able to model ourselves after something that's meaningful. Right. And that's why it's so important too, um, John, um, for kids to have as much exposure as they possibly can get. Very true. Exposure mm -hmm. is so very important. So that they can see. Very important the success Absolutely. within your own age group, within your own race, whatever it is you're mm -hmm. looking for, mm -hmm. that is crucial to what's going on today. Mm -hmm. um, I use it for the entrepreneurs program. I use professionals. Mm -hmm. If I need an accountant to teach a lesson on accounting, to do mm -hmm. the books, to do the market analysis, what mm -hmm. I use those professionals. Mm -hmm. And they come in and they teach those kids. Same thing with the classroom. Mm -hmm. and, with, and with these young entrepreneurs or these students that are trying to figure out or find their way when they go off to college mm -hmm. and try to mm -hmm. change the world. Yeah. Um, oftentimes what happens is they don't have that, uh, those steps to follow in. And the they pattern. don't yeah. have these, um, you know, you say, oh, dream big. Yes. Mm -hmm. But they don't know what to dream what big. Or, or mm -hmm. in the dream, they don't know how to get to the big part of it. Yeah. And so, luckily for me, when I started my company 14, almost 15 years ago, mm -hmm. I would say ignorance was bliss because Perfect. I didn't know that I couldn't do it. I didn't yeah. know mm -hmm. that it was really mm -hmm. hard. But you had uh, those markers. Well, I had those markers, yes. My, my parents, I used them as mm -hmm. markers. My father was an entrepreneur. My mm -hmm. mom was a registered mm -hmm. nurse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I watched them get up and go to work every day and mm -hmm. come, come home yep. and somehow make things work. And my dad, who worked for himself, he, the magic fairy doesn't drop a paycheck in his mm -hmm. bank account every Friday. Yeah. And I had so, an yes. understanding of that at yeah. a very young age. Mm -hmm. So when I stepped off the ledge, so to speak, mm -hmm. to jump and start my own business, mm -hmm. I knew that the first few years would be rough. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I yeah. knew yeah. that if I can get past those first few years, then I should be OK. Mm -hmm. And so now, 14 years later, um, saying ignorance was bliss, who would have thought that I'd be 14 years away with wow. over 100 employees, 
with a licensed home care, home wow. care agency licensed by the Department that's of significant. Health. Significant. Right. So I didn't know that I couldn't do it. That's, that's what I want to say. Mm -hmm. And that is so powerful because a lot of times uh, people don't want to start their own business because they have in their mind the fears that stop them, um, the finances that Major stop them. Right. Yeah. It's, it's so many issues, mm -hmm. personal issues, uh, whatever it may be, and that stops them. Right. So they, they may have the dream in their head, mm -hmm. but they're afraid to put it on paper and go mm -hmm. forth with it. True. And look, look what she created. And look at what you both have created. Mm -hmm. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I want to applaud you all right now. Let me go ahead and applaud you myself. <laughs> wow. So with that given, so we, we, we're talking about the barriers, the fear. Fear is a major issue for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, fear of, I, I think the biggest fear that we have is the fear of what if this doesn't work? What if fear I failure. step out of, the, out of the boat and I make a fool of myself? Or, you know, what if I step out of the boat and the funding doesn't come through and now I have to resort to the life I lived before, uh, the embarrassment. So why entrepreneurship, given all of the obstacles and you gave the statistic, uh, 90, was it 95 percent mm -hmm. of people in entrepreneurship in this country fail within, you said, the first two years, mm -hmm. whatever, the, the, the uh, two years, right? Two years. Yes. Yeah. Why entrepreneurship? given all of the odds that are stacked against you? Because never in the history of the U.S. Mm -hmm. has there been such a shift. Mm. We know that the nine to five does not work. Mm -hmm. It didn't work for our grandparents, their parents, our parents. It's changing. Mm -hmm. So the shift is in entrepreneurship. You're saying there's a shift. There's a shift. So there's a shift. So life 50 years ago is not the same than it is now. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the shift is we're to jump on the boat of entrepreneurship and take our rightful place. I'm a baby boomer. Mm -hmm. It used to be that we were told, go to college, get the good job, mm -hmm. stay on that job forever mm -hmm. and retire. See then, but that wasn't That's the lang but that wasn't yeah. the language in my house. Right. My mm -hmm. dad was mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. My language mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. find something that you like, mm -hmm. get people to pay you to do that. Mm -hmm. There you go. And you'll be happy mm -hmm. every go. day of your life. There you go. That was that was what mm -hmm. happened in my household. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so it was I wasn't an easier programmed. transition for you. Right, because yes. I didn't have a mindset of nine to five. Yeah. My dad worked fourteen hours at twelve hours a day, ten, all day long if he needed to. Mm. And so, like I was telling you um, a few days ago when we had our conversation, I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning every day mm -hmm. because I can't wait to get started because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I have so many things to do. What time do you sleep? I, I go to sleep around 9, 30, 10, so I'm oh, boring. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh, that's really, wow. <laughs> that's the time I'm starting. I'm boring. Gracious. But, um, I, I, you know, I... You, you want something, you go out there and you rip the streets up until you can get it. Absolutely. Exactly. And failure, yeah. exactly. it's not necessarily failure, it's practice. All right, mm -hmm. that didn't work. I better mm -hmm. try something exactly. different. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That has to be the mindset. And it's funny that you mentioned that because when we fail, it really attacks our confidence. Mm. It really does. It really attacks the confidence. So you go out there and you step out of the boat and you sink. Now you're embarrassed and you start to question your own abilities. How do you rise out of that uh, ditch? You have to shake it off. You and can't stay forward. in that moment. Mm. You and can. it's, mm. it's, it's more, I, I don't know if it's the, the educator in me, it's more of a learning experience. Right. So it's, it's, a a learning, it's a learning experience. It's a learning experience. Everything a should be Never a, a learning experience. Right. Mm. What did you get from it? What are you taking away from what you just experienced? And you need, to, you need to change with the tides. Mm -hmm. You need to be flexible. Mm -hmm. very, I've very gone important. through mm -hmm. every letter of the alphabet in terms of plans in the past 14 years. You said you failed? I, I've gone through every letter of the oh, alphabet. Oh, every letter. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I had plan A, plan B, mm -hmm. plan B, mm -hmm. all the way to Z. All right, start, start again. again. Plan A, plan yes. B. Because every single day that I wake up, mm -hmm. I can't imagine not having this business. Mm -hmm. And so whatever it took, I needed to change myself so that I could make myself marketable so that people will pay me to do what I'm good at. So how do you get to that point? Like you mentioned, see, you grew up in, in a household where those values were reinforced and you saw those markers. You had patterns that were established. 
You know, you lived in a, in a community where the, that type of language and that lingo uh, was a part of the lexicon. Uh, so how do you take someone who is part of a community or a society or a neighborhood where that type of knowledge or that consciousness hasn't been instilled? How do you take a person who grew up with the nine to five mentality and transition them to the world of entrepreneurship? You keep it very... That, no, that, that, that's a tough thing to do. Yeah, you keep it very basic. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at past records, if you look at the history, family history, mm -hmm. um, uh, race history, mm -hmm. it didn't work. The nine to five didn't work. Mm -hmm. So insanity is doing the same, same thing, thing over, over, over and over, and over mm -hmm. again, expecting, expecting the same result. Mm -hmm. A different result. A different result. result. A different mm -hmm. result. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So we, we understand that everybody's going to be an entrepreneur. We know mm -hmm. that. Right. But at the same time, you want to find where you fit. What's your powerful. purpose? That's she powerful. had a passion. A yeah. mm -hmm. She had a passion for mm -hmm. what she And everybody has to find I that I love passion. my business. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. what I do. Yeah, she just, wakes up yeah. early. Love it. Because yeah. in her sleep, her it's brain going. is my going. My brain is going. going. Her brain is going. It is. You know, my, yeah. my brain mm -hmm. goes all night, and I can't get to sleep by 9.30 because my brain is going. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, 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 I think I do <laughs> about three, four hours I'm, a night. I'm not waking up at 4 o'clock. But, you know, see, the funny thing is this. I was having a conversation with someone yesterday, and I, and I come across these conversations quite often. The challenge is I don't know my purpose. I don't know my passion. I want to start a business, but I don't know which direction to go into. So you get discouraged because you don't know where to go. You're overloaded with options, so you resort back to the 9 to 5 lifestyle, even though you know that you have more in you to offer the world. Right. How do you... How do you grapple with that. I think it, it comes to you as you as you experience things mm -hmm. as you go down the road you got a year up under your belt you got a couple mm -hmm. of years and yeah. it may not come as quickly as some some mm -hmm. people everybody is different mm -hmm. right. but I think you discover it when I started um, my business my 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 reason mm -hmm. for starting the business was my children um, our the Lord says we are to lead generational that's wealth that's true so that was the purpose well, it evolved from that. Mm -hmm. um, one of my goals is to create a youth employment program for my students in Hempstead mm -hmm. with the money that I'm making. Because um, with, with my school job, I have been the youth coordinator for mm -hmm. the town of Hempstead. Mm -hmm. It's a government grant. Mm -hmm. That grant has decreased over the years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to depend on them anymore. I'm going to create my own, you know, and that's that's where the power. I was that's about to where just the power say is. that, and we were talking about that earlier. We were talking about us, especially us as a community, as an African American community, understanding that we control our destiny. Mm -hmm. We control mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the future of our lives mm -hmm. and our generations. Mm -hmm. we, the power is in our hands. And write your ticket. Write your ticket, write, write the vision, vision. Yep. write the mm -hmm. ticket. Well, I, mm -hmm. I don't like the term ticket. But that's, <laughs> but that's not really the but, language. Write the vision. Write, write the, the vision. vision. Yeah. Write the vision. But yeah. some people, they don't have vision because they don't know what to look for. So they how, can't articulate. They can't formulate. They can't put it down on paper. So and see, there are, different, right, mm -hmm. there are different aptitude tests, career tests. There's mm -hmm. different interests so that you can find out. What do you like in your spirit? This is what I ask my students. Mm -hmm. This is what I ask the young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. What do you do in your spare time? Mm -hmm. What are your hobbies? Because the things that you spend all your time doing, that's, that's what you like. That's your purpose. Right. Yeah. That's right. what yeah. you like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, as you said, turn it into a mm -hmm. money maker. Right. Who's going to yeah. buy that? Who would support that? Mm -hmm. You know, when I started my business, I. I worked at a large hospital, mm -hmm. and um, I, when I resigned, I said, you know what, I'm going to go out and help one person at a time mm -hmm. and see where it goes from mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one person turned into a dozen people, mm -hmm. turned wow. into a couple mm -hmm. dozen people. It never and, stopped. And just, it just doesn't stop. Yeah. Um, you're, it's limitless mm -hmm. what we can do. Mm -hmm. And especially in working with seniors and persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I'm, in, I'm a, a court-appointed guardian. Mm -hmm. I'm an expert witness. So wow. I try to 
put my finger on as many things as mm -hmm. possible so that I can make a difference, yes. mm -hmm. so that yeah. I can bring mm -hmm. more value mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. what I have to offer. Mm -hmm. You actually brought something up that, uh, another thing that resonated with me, you are saying bring more value. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. That's a critical piece to business. I'm actually reading a book now, and they, uh, they actually say the, the first component of success in business is identifying the passion. Mm -hmm. Once you identify the passion, you then have to offer value. Right. So elaborate more on that. Uh, how important is it to merge the two? Sometimes we have the passion, but we don't understand the value of offering the value. Mm -hmm. uh, just elaborate more on so, offering well, value. So, well, if I use my business as an example, I go to, into hospitals mm -hmm. and assist people with discharge planning. Mm -hmm. So your grandmother's in the hospital, you mm -hmm. flew in from California, mm -hmm. she fell down. Mm -hmm. So now you have um, the doctors in the white lab coats and mm -hmm. you know so they're the professionals mm -hmm. so you be guided by what they mm -hmm. say but what people don't realize is you have the option to ask questions yes. so bringing me into the room when you're in a high pressured situation to take grandma home even mm -hmm. though you live in California you really don't have a way to mm -hmm. do that yeah mm -hmm. so the value that I bring is options mm -hmm. is resources mm -hmm. is a how to get from point A to point, point B. B so that's yeah. my value so people will pay me to sit in that meeting mm -hmm. so that I can provide guidance to them even though they're sitting across from a bunch of professionals because mm -hmm. you have to have a large knowledge base to mm -hmm. understand even what they're saying. Insurances are convoluted. Who can understand that? Absolutely. What do you mean my grandmother fell down and her insurance isn't going to pay for mm -hmm. her to go to rehab? Why not? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe why not is because it could be the charting. It mm -hmm. could be the way the nurses are reporting. It could be that you haven't articulated that when grandma, even though she's 90 years old, when she was home, she can go up and down 12 steps and mm -hmm. walk about 200 feet. Mm -hmm. Now the picture that you see in the bed of this um, debilitated person who's deconditioned and weak, in their mindset, oh, she doesn't have the potential to rehab mm -hmm. and get any stronger. But you haven't presented a strong enough case so that this team of professionals can understand that your grandmother can rehab and she can go get back mm -hmm. up those 12 mm -hmm. steps. Yeah. If, you, if you advocate yeah. for my family member to go to the rehab. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I come. That's the value. I bring the knowledge on how to get where you want your family member to be. And that's what keeps you safe. at the cutting edge yes. because yes. offering that value is what creates the prosperity. Right. Like a business without value, a business that's not in demand, is it so you're not, gonna, right. you're not right. going to pay me to come sit down next to you because I don't know what I'm talking exactly. about. Right. You're going to pay me because I've got you're all the of the, expert. I have your entire yes. checklist of what ah. you want to happen. Yes. Uh -huh. So when I leave that room, that whole checklist should be accomplished because of, that's the value. And that goes back to the whole saying, and we were talking about this earlier, your faith without works is dead. Yes. So we need to have the faith. Mm -hmm. We need to have the inner uh, psychology of wealth and prosperity and business ownership and hope. Uh, we need to have the inner game in check, but we also have to do our research. Right. We yes. also have to make sure that we're providing a value. We have a solid like business plan. You know, we need to have certain things in place so that we can position ourselves for success. And I think sometimes we, we missed the second part. I'll give you a good example. <laughs> I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you one good example. <laughs> I'll meet someone at an event and they'll tell me about their business and they're all excited about it. And then mm -hmm. I say, oh, well, let me get a business card. They go, oh, I don't have one. Don't well, have one. right. Yeah. if you right. have a business, right. how do you step out right. the front door and you I'm don't to, have a business I'm about card. to walk in the door right now because I, mm -hmm. I actually, I came across the situation mm -hmm. yesterday and this gentleman had an amazing idea and I wanted to connect with him, but he didn't have a business card. So mm -hmm. How can you call him? And he wasn't connected to social media. Um, wow. He also didn't have an email address. So just the basic, just the basic fundamentals he didn't have. Right. And that stifles the growth. And it's really important that we talk about this because if our mission is to grow into advanced black business, we need to have certain things in place to ensure our success. Absolutely. A and business card is a good start. It's business card is a great start. start. And it's, it's, yeah. it's really simple. Mm -hmm. The business card, the social media, mm -hmm. that really doesn't take too it's much so free, effort. The, or the social media, right, you can right. sign up you online. You can get the business cards pretty much free if you go to the right websites. 
um, simple to us. You the think. business plan may take a little bit, yeah. you know, you know, some time and thought behind that. But mm -hmm. there are some couple of things there that you mentioned that should have been taken care of. But you know, it, it's funny that you mention it because I feel like certain things that may be simple for us may not be as simple for others. I'm starting to realize that. And how do you overcome those hurdles? Because social media for me was a major challenge a few mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. The reason why it was a challenge was because uh, one, it was just overwhelming, and two, I wanted to disconnect from my old life, you know, college years, and I, mm -hmm. I didn't want that old baggage following me into the you know, the, the new life that I created for myself, thank mm -hmm. God. <laughs> I created a new life for myself. I didn't want the old baggage. Mm -hmm, I'm sorry, mm -hmm, friends. Mm -hmm. So social media, uh, e even the term social media had a very negative stigma. So how do you overcome those hurdles so that you're not, your progress isn't stifled? Well, it, it also depends on what you're doing with social media. Mm -hmm. Social media right. should really be a marketing tool mm -hmm. for your business. And we don't know that. A lot of us don't know that we can use social media as a platform to advance our businesses. The, fir the we, first, we I'm not going to get on Facebook or Twitter and we're going to talk about the weather or the new right. shoes that you or wore at stuff. an event. Mm -hmm. No, we're going we're to talk. I'm going to make the connection mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. We're going to network. We're going to mm -hmm. share ideas and, and see how I can help you and you can help me. Yeah. The first thing I tell people, you know, halfway through conversation with them, I say, and go to my website. Mm -hmm. well, before I hang up the mm -hmm. phone from someone, yeah. I say, and mm -hmm. visit my website. Mm -hmm. my, my service that answers after hours in their speech on what they're supposed to say when they pick up the phone is, and visit the website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, in, in my employees, when mm -hmm. I'm walking through the office and I hear somebody taking in a new referral, before they hang up, I expect them to say, and go to the website. Go to the website. It's over and over exactly. again because that, that tells people what you do, how yep. they can get a hold of Absolutely. you, the services mm -hmm. that you provide. Mm -hmm. It's all laid out there mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And some people, when they don't have a website, it almost makes them not a real thing. True. What do you mean? Exactly. You don't have a website? Very, very true. Right. Exactly. Very true. Mm -hmm. very. So you actually hit on some very uh, significant points. One, having a business card. Yes. Very, yes. very essential. Having a website. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, social media. Being connected to social media mm -hmm. and using social media as a platform For to stimulate to, growth mm -hmm. and to market your brand. Yes. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful. And you need a 70 second elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. If you happen to get it's the attention. 70 seconds of now. 70, so what? 70 seconds for they me. They told me 60 seconds. They, they, <laughs> you got added, 10 extra seconds. I added now. 10 I more seconds. More stuff. <laughs> I've always said 70 seconds. So, mm -hmm. But you need to be, for instance, I was leaving court the other day, and, and on the way down in the elevator, so it's a true story, I was explaining to one attorney what my company does. By the time we got to the first floor so and we went to step stuff. out, the other attorney mm -hmm. to my right that wasn't mm -hmm. even in the conversation said, mm -hmm. excuse me, miss, miss. Can I get your card? Mm -hmm. And I wasn't speaking to him. Mm -hmm. But I got both their attentions by the time I got from the 11th floor down to the first floor. Mm -hmm. yes. You need that elevator yes. pitch. Yes. It's critical. Very yes. critical. So, mm -hmm. And how do you develop the elevator pitch when you have so many thoughts? And here's, here's what I'm talking about. So you have a lot of young entrepreneurs that have these business ideas. They have a business structure but they don't know how to frame the elevator speech. There's how so do you many resources. There's frame so <laughs> and how do you access those resources? There's so many resources um, available to them for, for the high school kids. Mm -hmm. We participate in one program that's just for high school mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. For my young entrepreneurs, um, they see samples mm -hmm. of elevator pitches on the internet. Now you know the structure you know what's being said. Mm -hmm. They go to different competitions. Mm -hmm. um, we usually take them to, to Delaware University. Mm -hmm. uh, and they compete in an entrepreneur's program. Mm -hmm. And for three years straight, they have taken first place oh, on the high school that's level. That's great. Mm -hmm. So th you got all these resources. There is nothing. If you want to know something, you can find it out. I you can, that's you another can, good point. You can, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's you know, another great point. You don't have to start from scratch. There's no reason to reinvent, reinvent the will. The will. Mm -hmm. Get the resources. See what you like. Take a little bit of this, a little mm -hmm. bit of that. Create some in your own head yeah. to, to detail it, to, to make it more to what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. 
and go for it. And be committed and be, to your yeah. commitment. Be committed. I like that. Don't yes. get started yes. and halfway through waffle and say, oh, you know, forget mm -hmm. it. I'm yeah. not going to do it. Mm -hmm. What uh -huh. makes people successful is when you do what you say. You're committed 120%. Right. So if someone pays you to do something, they don't want excuses mm -hmm. when it's time for that product to be completed. Ooh, they don't want issue. reasons for why you missed the deadline. Very big issue. They want you to just do what you say you're going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, that's critical because that's your reputation. Before I get to any arena, it, like let's say I have a speaking engagement or I'm, or I'm the expert witness in court, so my reputation before I open the door and step into the room already precedes me. They know when Yvonne Murphy walks in, she's going to do what she says she's mm -hmm. going to do. Mm -hmm. And you can't beat mm -hmm. having a, a good reputation. reputation. It's very important. True. Is yeah, very true. Mm -hmm. So there's a scenario, you're talking about reputation, where I walk into a restaurant and what I do is each week, a few times a week, I go to black businesses, I visit black businesses, I meet the owner, and I try to place myself in the shoes of the consumer, mm -hmm. right? So I try their products, I do a walkthrough, and I just engage in the, 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 their experience. So I go to one business, I can't say any names, right? Mm -hmm. I walk in, the customer service is absolutely horrible. Like, mm -hmm. like, like no one smiled. Mm -hmm. Don't you know when you walk into Applebee's or any mm -hmm. mainstream mm -hmm. restaurant, you're greeted by, hello, yes. welcome to yes. our restaurant. Right. Mm -hmm. Really nice to have you mm -hmm. so I can get your money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, I walk in, very, very cold. Uh, the presentation was not the best. Uh, just, just the atmosphere didn't necessarily resemble excellence. It, like, it didn't scream excellent. So the very next day, I talked to the business owner, and and, and I'm polite, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm I'm a very mm -hmm. uh, polite. I mm -hmm. try to be polite at certain times, you know, and he comes back with a list of reasons why they can't execute. So I go to him and I say, Hey, I'm I'm, I'm a consumer. I came by because I heard about your, your 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 restaurant, and I wanted to promote you, but because of my experience, I can't promote you. I had issues with customer service, I had issues with uh, just the time, I had issues with the overall ambiance, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not trying to be too critical, but this was my experience. Mm -hmm. So rather than taking that and digesting it right. and using that right. as fuel to mm -hmm. become better, mm -hmm. he actually responded mm -hmm. and told me why. He, he couldn't, couldn't execute, mm -hmm. like why he couldn't change. Right. And that was really disappointing to me because mm -hmm. as a consumer, I wanted to come back. But because you responded in such a way where you didn't take what I was trying to offer, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, I, I really felt rejected. So like, like, like respond to that. So when you're confronted with criticism, but you don't take the criticism, and use the criticism as fuel to become better. You have to listen. You have to listen to the criticism, and you have to take well, constructive it as a, criticism. Constru well, constructive. Some people are going to be constructive. Some people, their message won't seem so mm -hmm. constructive, mm -hmm. but you have to hear the message. Mm -hmm. For instance, in my office, when I'm walking through the um, the office and I listen to people answer the phone, I don't want to hear someone say hello. Yeah. That's not. I want them to say hello, good morning, Miguel right. right. Care, right. Yvonne Murphy, right. professionalism. Exactly. Right. You know, it's the little yes. details. Mm -hmm. that, so when you hear a warm, welcoming voice on the phone, you okay, you want to talk more exactly. with that person. You're engaged. You're engaged. You're if you engaged. hear a, a quick hello. And they're, they're really disinterested. Number one, yeah. identify the company that just answered the phone. Mm -hmm. Did they call exactly. the laundromat or did exactly. they call Beacon Elder Care? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, and it starts mm -hmm. with the employees that have to take pride in what they do, too. Mm -hmm. So maybe the people at that restaurant, they're not very happy to work there. Otherwise, they'd be glad to see you come through the front door. Right. And it, could, uh, it could also be leadership as well. And I brought that example up uh, for a very specific reason because a lot of us, especially... Uh, working with black businesses, it's a major issue. Customer service is a major issue. Mm -hmm. And if we're trying to grow and prosper and expand, we have to make sure that we have certain things in place to facilitate growth. Right. Absolutely. Um, when I work um, and I'm looking for a new client, mm -hmm. a new restaurant, uh, an apartment building, mm -hmm. 
that may want to use my electric services or mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, when I go to them, yes, I'm professional. I'm dressed all the time. That's, That's just exactly. my generation. Yeah, That's yeah. a generational thing. Uh -huh. um, and you have to be courteous mm -hmm. because they don't have to do business with you. That's right. They People can do options. business with someone else. They have options. Right. They, have yeah. options. Yeah. they have options. They have options. So it makes so. sense if you're really trying to grow your business, mm -hmm. if you're really trying to expand, you have to present yourself in such a way total professionalism, total right. courtesy. Mm -hmm. Even if they're saying no, and in network marketing, we get no's. Oh yeah. We get no's. All the time. All the time. Yeah. But that doesn't stop me from presenting mm -hmm. what I have to offer, because mm -hmm. I know it's a value. Mm -hmm. Our prices are some of the lowest prices out there. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't stop you. You just have to know, okay, this person said no, Next. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can't be discouraged when you, you hear no. Mm -hmm. No. You can't be discouraged when you hear people say, oh, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, why not? Yeah. Early on when I first started this business, I met with a marketing person from a very large organization. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do back and forth business with them. Mm -hmm. I refer to them. They refer to me. Mm -hmm. Synergy. Mm -hmm. So we met at a restaurant for an early dinner. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to explain to the person, now I'm, this is my first or second year in business, mm -hmm. I'm trying to explain to the person what I do, what mm -hmm. my value mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. how I can assist with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And she kept talking over me and cutting me off and she was only interested in what business I can bring, bring to, to her. her. Mm -hmm. And then maybe a quarter of the way through, I said, well, I thought this meeting was for us to yes. have synergy back and mm -hmm. forth. Exactly. And she said, no, I thought this meeting was for you to refer business to us. And then she said, well, this meeting is over. Now we're at a restaurant eating. Wow. She picked up her things and she left me sitting there in the restaurant. So now talk about a rejection. So what what mm -hmm. did she accomplish there? Well, she, she just put fuel in my yes, back to be more successful was, when she yeah. did that. And she right. also lost business. That's, of that's course what I'm saying. Yeah, you're, of course she did. you're not going to do business with her no? because in your mind, she's not interested in exchange mm -mm, no. and successful One business people absolutely it's, it's definitely Th there has to be it mutual has to it, it can't be, be about well absolutely. what can you do for me the mentality and, and see a lot of that goes back to and i wanted to this is the next topic mm -hmm. the psychology of success because the psychology of success is how can i contribute to you like what can i give that's why they say it's better to give than to receive right but the psychology of failure and the psychology of poverty mm -hmm. is how can I get, how can I take from you, how can you give to me? I'm not interested in giving to you, how can you give to me? That was her mentality. And that's the a poverty meeting. mentality. And, right. that's, and right. that's a major issue. And that's a major issue. Major issue. And that's why people are not as successful as they can be. Yes. You, you a have really to be. really powerful yes. point. You, it's the psychology of failure, the psychology of poverty that stifles the progress. Right. Yes. Major issue, yeah, major. especially when you grew up in communities where poverty was all around you, and people had the mindset of take, 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 mm -hmm. take, take. Mm -hmm. There is no giving. Mm -hmm. There is no. Nope. How can I contribute yes. to you yes. to make yes. your life better or mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. your business better? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you have to give a little to get a little. Yes. No one gets the give get concept. Mm. There's the the story yeah. in the Bible of the widow who gave her last two cents yeah. to someone. That was a fortune. powerful piece. That was a powerful. Mm -hmm. But you also have the story in the Bible about the rich man mm -hmm. who was speaking to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, take everything that you own mm -hmm. and give it away. And the rich man went away sad, yeah. depressed, because he had a lot of stuff. Mm, materialism. Materialism. Yeah. We, we are supposed to be givers. Mm -hmm. um, this new generation, the millennium generation, know nothing about that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. They are the that's takers. Unfortunately, it's they true. are they the are takers. takers. And that type of mentality will hold us back. back. Absolutely. And that's They're a, our future. And see, like, that's a very powerful point because and I had a conversation with someone last week, and he had the same mentality. I was trying to do business with him, uh, and I had the same mentality the same mentality as you. How can we work together synergistically to create a bigger product? But in the back of his mind, 
He didn't want to contribute no. to me. Mm -hmm. He wanted it for mm -hmm. himself. And he'll never be as successful in real life as he is in his mind right. because, because of that he doesn't stingy understand yeah. Yeah. that yeah. concept yes. of, of yes. teamwork and being able to pull from a Rolodex of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rolodex is dating myself, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to say being able to yeah. pull from your uh, mm -hmm. your Android yeah. or iPhone. <laughs> Um, but I was like, you know, what? Roll with that? What is that? <laughs> you know what that is. I almost is. forgot what that was for a minute. <laughs> but you, you need a team. You need you yeah. go to people. Yeah. You need Powerful. somebody. That, right. You need people that can make things happen because you work well together. Mm. Right? And you need a person. I don't care what type of business you're in. You need a mentor. So you need a team. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to backtrack because you brought, I wish I was taking notes. I should have brought my laptop. <laughs> but one, we have to have a psychology of success, which basically tells us you have to give. Yes. There's power in mm -hmm. giving mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. order to receive. You have mm -hmm. to give. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, repeat the point that you just made. You need a team you need of people a team. that you can pull mm -hmm. from. So yes. you have to open up your hands mm -hmm. to give. Mm -hmm. You need a team, mm -hmm. and you need a mentor. You need a mentor. Yes. And a lot a of us mentor, don't have mentors. Yeah. Um, in that particular business that you're in, mm -hmm. I'm going to say a spiritual mentor. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, it is so vital because we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. We don't know. I always use the analogy. There's certain things that we know. We know our name. My name is Jackie. Mm -hmm. I live in New mm -hmm. York. There's certain things that I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many miles from New York to California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's also things that I don't know, and I don't even know that but I don't, don't know right. them. I say that all the time. You don't exactly. know what you, you don't, don't know. know. You, yeah. mm, that's true. And that's what holds us back. So that's where someone else comes in, right. someone else experience mm -hmm. that can guide you and can tell you. You have to give. Mm -hmm. You have to do, the, you have to have business cards, you know. You know. Business cards you know? are critical. Yeah. Powerful. Very powerful. And the reason why I say it's powerful is because it may come natural for people like you. Since, I mean, you all have arrived. You all are like cream of the crop to me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but for a lot of people, we don't have these nuggets. Mm -hmm. And consequently, this is what holds us back. Yeah. It's not having this information, not having these discussions. And I also wanted to throw something else in there as well, your networks. Because your net, and mm -hmm. wouldn't you agree that, that yes. your network determines Determine your, your net network? Work. Right. And yes. I didn't realize that until yes. I started doing research. Yes. And uh, uh, scholars, and they, they quote this all the time, your net worth is going to be contingent on your five closest friends. Closest friends. So if your five mm. closest friends, if they're all broke and struggling and <laughs> barely to trying to survive, you should, yes, you in yes. five years, you're going to be the sixth right. one. <laughs> right, right. You, there should always yeah. be someone in your circle that's above you. Yes. That's above you. Absolutely. Above at you. least, at least one that's, that has already made it, has already arrived, is doing what you want to do or something along those lines. So that you can learn from them. You can pour into the person mm -hmm. that's, yeah. you know, but you need someone. Yeah, mm -hmm. you need someone that. And yeah. I think these younger kids should take advantage of uh, internships and oh, externships. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know mm -hmm. when I went to college, every semester I went, so I did some other internship, some other business. Mm -hmm. it, those businesses, if you do a good job, if you hustle while you're there, if mm -hmm. you... Don't just learn your position while you're sitting mm -hmm. there. Pay attention to mm -hmm. everyone around you. What, is, what do they do? What do they do? What do they do? You know, how can I fit into this company potentially when mm -hmm. I graduate? Mm -hmm. Because these people know me mm -hmm. and they know my work ethic and values. Y you can get a lot of exposure if you go out there and you give your labor for free when you're in college. Very, very, yes. very, yes. very powerful you can't, point. You can't, I have uh, some people that come in to apply for jobs and they name these unreasonable outlandish salaries that they would like to get mm -hmm. they've never worked anywhere before they've never done anything but you can't before. even work a cash register they've, and and you want you want a hundred thousand you want a six-figure <laughs> salary no start somewhere yeah. and i've even offered to um college students or, or college graduates i've said look you don't have any real world experience mm -hmm. in this area even though your college degree says mm -hmm. xyz 
I, you know, come and mm -hmm. intern at my office for a few months. Mm -hmm. Let's see how you do. If yeah. you like it, then potentially there's a job here mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. yeah. once you pass that internship mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. They're insulted that I've said, oh, come intern here for free because oh, really? that's not worth their time or worth their value. Meanwhile, yeah. they're home not gaining the experience, making no money, mm -hmm. and each interview they go to, they still have the same empty bag of tricks because they don't know what to do. And yes. even if they right. are making money, they're not getting the experience that they may need. Right, because they're working someplace else. You're working else. somewhere that's not really leading to anything. Exactly. Or they're not exactly. working at all. Not working yes. at all. Yes, or they're not working at yeah. all. Take the um, internship. It seems like, um, uh, again, uh, with working with the high school students, they don't, they don't want to take the jobs that we took hmm. when we were 13, 14 years old. What kind of job? Uh, McDonald's. I worked at a gas station. That's the only jobs that they can get. Mm -hmm. When we were 16, when I was 16, we could work at the mall. I, re I worked at Gimbel's. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all don't remember that. Y'all too young for that. I was like, Gimbel's? I was trying to think about it. <laughs> it was a major <laughs> department store. It. Yeah. it was a major department yeah. store. Right. Yeah. Um, but because the generations are not keeping up the work ethics, mm -hmm. doing a good job, the the department stores and a lot of other uh, companies are upping the age. Mm -hmm. Instead of being 16, they want you to be 18. Wow, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. So that's leaving out the a lot of people. Employees. Yeah, but they they have this attitude. Oh, I don't want to work at McDonald's. No, that's a, money is money. Right, and you know where you need the experience. Right. Use as, it as a stepping as a stone, stepping stone yeah. mm -hmm. until you can get something better. Mm -hmm. And wherever you are, that doesn't mean that you can't learn the ropes mm -hmm. and move up from there. Which they don't see it you like know? that. They're very, They're very myopic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like I said, when I was in college, I went to different jobs to find out, do you guys pay for school? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you guys offer anything mm -hmm. for college mm -hmm. students? Because mm -hmm. I'm a college student. Mm -hmm. I'd like to work for you, but what can mm -hmm. you do for me in terms exactly. of school? Yeah. I finally found Hess Gas Station. Mm -hmm. They paid you money mm -hmm. to go to school each semester I would turn in my report card mm -hmm. and on a scale I would get money for school books mm -hmm. or forget mm -hmm. anything that could yes. help my mom yes. so that she didn't have yes. to send additional yes. money yeah. that's what I went out and did but today you tell these kids well go get a part-time job at 7-eleven or, or McDonald's mm -hmm. or Burger King they just don't want to you have to start somewhere, somewhere. You, have to start you have to start somewhere, somewhere. somewhere. and that's why they say despise not small beginnings yes right. and I think sometimes, and this is a challenge for people like us, or I'll say people within my cohort, the young entrepreneur, we see the big vision, mm -hmm. which is awesome, but we don't want to start and, and, and actually go through the process. Because mm -hmm. what you're saying is you have to start somewhere yes. because there's a process that you have to go through right. in order to achieve the goal. That you're you're trying where you're trying to get to. There's a develop achieve the goal. There's, there's a yeah. development process. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. one you have to f follow orders to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. You have to show up on time and do the job and that you're supposed to. Basic right, basic thing. Yeah. Um, Your job starts at nine. You can't get there at nine thirty because mm -hmm. it starts at nine. Very true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, with the um, young entrepreneurs program and with the Town of Hempstead summer youth employment mm -hmm. program. Um, maybe like 40 kids was hired, and everybody did well. 40 out of how many students? It's a small. We have mm. about two, 2,200. Oh, 40 out of the 2,200. Yeah, it's it's wow, a that's small. A very low and remember, it's a government grant. Okay. And through the years, through the decades, it just gets smaller and okay. smaller. Mm. So okay. it's it's really it's really yeah. nothing. But those that did get hired, mm -hmm. uh, everyone did well. You know, I go around and mm -hmm. I check their work sites and speak to the employers and make sure everything's good. The mm -hmm. kids are doing a good job mm -hmm. except for two. Didn't show up time. Did not call when they were not showing up. Mm -hmm. um, because the boss was a young woman, um, around 30, early 30s. Mm -hmm. They couldn't handle that. So they thought she was more closer to their age and telling them, and what, could, to do. And telling them what to do <laughs> and they could not handle it. Mm -hmm. So that was not a successful match. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. People, I say, even to my kids, um, I say, people tell me what to do all day. Mm -hmm. All day long, yeah. people tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah. my answer is mm -hmm. yes, ma'am, yep. or yes, sir. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they don't have that. Mm -mm. They don't. Um, I say it all the time to, to I have a granddaughter. <laughs> Um, who's in that generation, and I say it all the time. I am, I am the age that I am, and I'm not 
able to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I have responsibilities. Right. Mm -hmm. And so do you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very true. And I think that those are the core values that we've missed in this generation. Mm -hmm. Responsibility. Mm -hmm. Responsibility. Right. Showing up to work on time. Mm -hmm. Understanding, mm -hmm. understanding that we have to start somewhere mm -hmm. because we need core values. Exactly. Uh, uh, very powerful. Yeah. And I think that if we can take all of these skills uh, or, or take all these concepts and these principles and merge them together, mm -hmm. we can build a stronger community. Right. You know, as simple as, as the interview, mm -hmm. you can't show up to the interview in jeans and a, and a, a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. That's not appropriate. Mm -hmm. You have to put your best foot forward That's because true. when I see you, I don't know you. Very true. Right. And so I don't want you to show up in jeans and a t-shirt because my, look around. My mm -hmm. office is dressed is filled with people who are professionals, mm -hmm. and we're all dressed appropriately. Mm -hmm. So that that's just the, a basic mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Putting on jeans and you know you're going to a job interview, mm -hmm. those, two, those two concepts don't go together. So what do you say to the, pers the young person who says, well, I feel like I should express myself the way I want to express myself. I feel that you should be hired first. Mm -hmm. Let's get hired first. And then you find out what's the protocol for that job, mm -hmm. what's the dress code for that job. You want to get your foot in the door first mm -hmm. right, and be you before mm -hmm. you start doing your own thing. So you do as the Romans do. You do as the Romans do. And yeah. sometimes my response to, well, you want to express yourself, but why can't you express yourself in your best dress, you know, in your mm -hmm. best foot forward, in your best outfit? The jeans and the T-shirt is the best way you can find to express yourself, and then mm -hmm. they'll think about that. No, it's really not. Now, so what? It, I'm sorry. I'm so, mm -hmm. we, we also have at the high school mm -hmm. certain days, mm -hmm. professional days. That's mm -hmm. very important. That's professional days. Very important, mm -hmm. yeah. Because they want to be in the, they definitely didn't want to be in uniforms. Mm -hmm. um, um, they want to be in their jeans. They want to be in their sneakers. You know mm -hmm. how they want to mm -hmm. dress. But one day a month, one day a week, mm -hmm. let's do professional. Professional. Let's do professional. And getting them into the habit and create, creating a culture of excellence. Mm -hmm. right. And do you believe that the same type of uh, mentality applies to the entrepreneur as well? Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, I do. Presentation-wise, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. from the way that you, you, know, you dress, the way that you structure the business, the way that you organize. Because you don't know what clientele you're going to work with. Mm -hmm. I always said, um, in the city, you can be more relaxed once you get mm -hmm. your foot in the door. Mm -hmm. They have a different mentality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On Long Island, it is strictly conservative. More conservative. It's strictly conservative. So it's about understanding where you are yes. and being yes. appropriate for that yes. place. Yes, right. These are really good skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's such an honor talking to you all tonight. So okay. if you can just share with us how we can reach out to you. If you can just share with the world, how can we reach out to you? Uh, you can contact me um, through my website, mm -hmm. which is fivelinks.net mm -hmm. mm -hmm. forward slash mm -hmm. THX. 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 Mm -hmm. So five links dot com dot net. I'm sorry, five, I'm five links. Yeah, so five dot net five links dot net slash t h x t h x. I am perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And you can reach me, Yvonne Murphy. Mm -hmm. uh, you can visit the website, which is www.beaconeldercare.com. Beaconeldercare.com. Okay. And you can call the office, which mm -hmm. is seven one eight four zero six nine five zero zero. And One more time. 718 406 9500. That's the number. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And it's a licensed home care agency and a social work agency. Thank you all so much for being here. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for having Thank me. Such you. an honor. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> So that concludes our show for the evening, the Black Business Alliance. You can follow us on Facebook at Building Black Enterprises. Our website is under construction. Our communication system is under construction. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.